Well, I think the most important audience for you to reach a student, other students, because I think it's, it's your future. And the fact is that when you reach a certain age, um, I was going to say you stop thinking, but that's not accurate. You stop being open to new ideas. It, it's just the fact that most people, when they reach about the age of 30, 35, just don't change their minds much. Um, and, you know, so you don't want to focus on them, because they're probably not going to change their minds much. I mean, I wouldn't ignore them, but uh, so you want to really focus on young people. Anybody from 16 to 28, that's a prime age of people forming their ideas about the world. About it. Now, I know people have changed their mind in their 70s, right? But, but I'm saying where, you, where you're going to have the bulk of your influence is, is in that age group. Um, you know, the most powerful thing you can do is talk, write, convey your ideas, let people know you don't agree with the convention, articulate alternative ideas, get involved in clubs, groups, objectivist clubs, tea party groups, where ideas are needed, right? Where, particularly tea parties, where they've got kind of the right emotions, and these are older people, granted, and they've got the right ideas generally, but you, somebody needs to fill in the blanks, and the blanks are huge, and you can help them do that. So, you know, activism can take on many forms. It can take on writing checks to the Iron Man Institute, which I strongly recommend. <laughs> you, know, you know, we raise from scratch $10 million every year. We have no endowment. We don't get the royalties on the books, in spite of rumors that suggest we do. We don't. Uh, I literally have to ask people for money all the way up to $10 million and more because we're growing. Um, so that's one form of activism. Uh, other form of activism is, 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 is to become a professor uh, where you have a huge amount of impact. Uh, think of a, you know, I don't know, a Pete Betke. And think of the kind of influence somebody in that position has. I mean, huge amount of influence on thousands of students because his graduate students didn't go and teach students. So there's this enormous impact. To just, you know, to, to going out and being a successful at whatever it is in life you want to be successful at, which is crucial. And in your spare time, because I don't think this is optional anymore, because I think the end of civilization is approaching. <laughs> no, I really do. I, I really think, you know, things, and, and I was the most optimistic guy you'd ever met. I mean, I never thought I would ever say this. But I think we've got 20 years to turn things around. Uh, yeah, some of you have heard this metaphor, so forgive me if I'm, if I'm uh, explaining this again. But, I, you know, we're on a raft. 350 million of us on this raft. And with that, heading down a river, and there's an enormous waterfall over here. And the river's pushing us along. That's kind of the culture and the views and the, and the philosophy of the world right now. And we're all sitting on this raft with oars. And we're all rowing with the current. And you could argue Republicans have oars with holes in them, so when they row, it goes a little <laughs> slower. And the Democrats have big oars, so when they row, it goes a little faster. Whatever you want. But we're all basically rowing towards the waterfall. And we've got 20 years before we get it. Maybe less, maybe more. I don't know. Leonard Peikoff thinks we have 40 years. A bit, 40 years. 20 years, 25 years. He thought we had 20 years, 20 years. 20 years, 20 years. Yes, no, I, I've infused it with optimism. Oh. <laughs> much more optimistic since he met me. Um, so I doubled, I doubled his projection. Plus, he was wrong 20 years ago, so maybe he's going to be um, This way, it's safe. He's pretty much guaranteed not to live 40 years. <laughs> you can't call him on his prediction. But I will be around in 20 years, so you can call me on this one. We either start seeing significant, dramatic change in the opposite direction, I'm not saying we're there, we're anywhere close to being where we want to be. But we have a feeling that we're starting to roll upriver. Or it's finished. And, and finished I mean we fall off the waterfall and that looks very, very ugly. Think, you know, think Rome, right? And, 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 and thinking Rome is hard. So you have to go to Rome to imagine this, right? What does Rome mean? Rome means that the peak of the Roman Empire, 200, 300 AD, there was over a million people in Rome. At about 600, 700 AD, there were 10,000 people in Rome. There wasn't another city, at least in the West, they might have been in China, but at least in the West, there wasn't another city of a million people plus until London achieved that goal in 1970. That is 17, now I'm not saying this is what's going to happen, but just to give you a sense of when I say Rome, it's bad. 1,700 years. 
And, and cities are a sign of civilization, let's no mistake. When you're not in a city, you're either dead or you're subsistence farming. Subsistence farming ain't fun. So cities are civilization. That's what the world looks like, right, when Rome happened. We have 20 years to turn it around. So go out, do the profession you want, you know, live a life, but, but spend some time on activism, on talking to people, on, you know, finding organizations to support, going to meetings, doing this stuff, because I don't think there's an option. And we're the tiniest of the tiniest minority, I think. I'm speaking of the whole room, I know we all don't agree. But those of us who believe in freedom, and whether you're an objectivist completely, or you just believe in some things but not others, we're the tiniest of minorities. If we don't fight, who's going to fight? This, this bunch of Republican clowns running for president? I mean, it's, it's, it's pathetic. And if this is the best Republicans could do in a year where they could win easily, we're in deep, deep trouble. Right? Because Obama could win against any one of these guys. Not Ron Paul. What's that? Not Ron Paul. Oh, Obama would crush Ron Paul. No, he would. Oh, of course he would. I mean, Ron Paul can't even win the Republican nomination. How could he win the presidential pick? Third party. No. Oh, I'm willing to take a bet. I'm willing to put my entire will. My entire will. You don't want to be straight for a waterfall. No, I'm, I, I just criticized Romney. Yeah, I just no, said I'm that like Ron Paul, Paul cannot win. Direction. Cannot win. You haven't been out there in the country and talked to people. Ron Paul cannot win. He won't even get the votes of some people who love liberty. Mm -hmm. Never mind the people who hate liberty, which is yeah. most of the people in the country. Implosive people. There's no way. Um, anyway, don't give me a Ron Paul. Anybody who hasn't asked a question, you know? Somebody who hasn't? <laughs>